Is it time to take the Detroit Lions seriously? And where do the Timberwolves stars like Cat, Ant, and Rudy land on ESPN's latest top 100 list? It's all coming up next on Superior Sports Talk. Carol 11 sports anchor Reggie Wilson covers the Twin City sports scene nonstop. Luke Inman is ready to put him on the hot seat. That's what you got to do to me. Instant analysis. Yanked. Out you go. Post game breakdowns and red hot takes. The Timberwolves need a stick. Reggie and Luke give you a daily dose of Minnesota sports with superior sports talk. Part of Locked On Sports Minnesota. And it starts now. Back in the lab, Reggie and Luke back at it. Another episode, Superior Sports Talk, presented by Locked On Sports Minnesota. It's your daily 30-minute breakdown of everything Minnesota sports, which you can now find streaming on your Roku or Amazon Fire Stick devices. So be sure to look out for our Locked On Sports Minnesota app there as well. That's Reggie Wilson on Twitter, at Reggie Wilson TV, and up on CARE 11. Reg, Thursday today, almost to the weekend. Huh. Can't wait. Need the weekend in the worst way, man. <laughs> Reggie's battling through some little cold, little scratchy throat going on right now, but he's a trooper. Look, look, look. Gonna... It's HIPAA. It's HIPAA. This is what that uh, Okay, there you, HIPAA, HIPAA. there you go. There you go. There you go. Hey, lots to get into. But first, remember, follow along Locked On Minnesota YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button and leave us a comment. And on Twitter, give us a follow at Locked On M-I-N. Remember, we're a podcast too, free and available, all platforms, Spotify, Apple, you name it. We got it. Tons of great choices over there. Ron Johnson Show, Football Party, and more. Your one-stop shop with endless Vikings talk with local experts. Do us a favor. Hit the subscribe button and drop us a five-star review. All right, to football we go, and your Minnesota Vikings, they sit tied the division standings with all three teams, Lions, Packers, and Bears, all one and one through the first two weeks. The Lions under Dan Campbell have been the hard knock darlings this season. After getting a little behind the scenes look at the players, the coaching staff, they've kind of become the underdog story fans have suddenly started to root for after being the laughing stock of the league for nearly, I don't know, past 20 years, really. Campbell's got him heading in the right direction. One of these guys that wears his emotions on his sleeve. He's got the love for the game, respect for the players' mentality and mindset. And it's finally manifesting in to some wins here after starting last year 0-10 and 1 the Lions have won three of their last six games and including this year they're four and four in their last eight matchups so being a 500 team might not sound like a huge accomplishment for most organizations but for a team stuck in the gutter the last 20 plus years it's a big step forward in the direction for success defense still their Achilles heel right now but in six of their last eight games the Lions offense has totaled 37 36 35 30 and 29 points twice. So say what you want. This team has figured out ways to score points. Reg, are you a believer when it comes to the Lions being more contender than pretender? And what specifically do you see in Dan Campbell that has helped turn this team around? Yeah, I believe in them to an extent. You know, like I think that they are much improved offensively, <clears throat> but I think defensively, there is some left to be desired. You know, you look at the, the last two games, the first two games of the season, 35, or they allowed 38 points to the Eagles, and then they allowed 27 points to the Commanders. So I think when you look at it from the standpoint of how they match up against the Vikings, that's why everybody's like, oh, it's going to be a shootout. And I think that's probably fair to say. Both defenses have left a little bit to be desired um, up until this point. And so I do think that they are able to contend. They're going to be a competitive team. They're going to be in every game. You know, Jared Goff is much improved. He looks like a totally different player this year. Still don't have Jamison Williams. So they're just doing what they do without him right now. Talent all over the field, you know, uh, on defense. Jeff Okuda's back. You know, Rodrigo, as they called him in uh, Hard Knocks, mm -hmm. Malcolm Mar Rodriguez is a uh, uh, – I mean, dude is a stud. It was like a fourth round pick or something like that. Six and, round and pick. He's just out there. Oklahoma yeah, State. He's just out there balling, man. Balling. Out of control. And so and then Aiden Hutchinson, watch out, man. Three sacks already. Like the dude looks like, you know what? Luke Braun. We had him on the show a few months ago. And he said that Aiden Hutchinson was gonna be a bust. So far, so far, <laughs> he is proving Luke. To be wrong. 
I, he must have heard him talking or something. Mm. But, you know, looking at Hard Knocks, they had a, a like a reverence almost for Aiden Hutchinson. Like they already knew and kind of respected that he was the real deal. And so I think what we're going to see is just a continuation of him maturing in the NFL. That offensive line, very underrated, really good. Really good. Really and, you good. Know, they're, yeah, yeah, they're clearing the way for DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams and keeping the pocket clean for Jared Goff to just be tossing all these touchdowns. And, you know, they're, they're really scary, man. So I do consider them a contender. Um, what that necessarily means, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe seven, eight, nine wins, something like that. Maybe because I do think that the defense is going to – be a tough battle for them. You know, Aaron Glenn is a great defensive coordinator, but, you know, they've, they've had some struggles. But they've got some key pieces on each level of that defense. But they just got to tighten some things up. As far as Dan Campbell, you asked about him. He's a very much a, a player's coach. You kind of saw he, he wears his heart on, the, on his sleeve. Uh, you saw that in Hard Knocks. But he also is a compassionate person. And he really cares about his players. He really cares about the game of football. And I know, you know, some people kind of question his acumen maybe. Maybe he's just a motivator or, you know, he's just a leader. He's not really pulling the strings kind of like uh, Ed Orgeron or something like that down in uh, at LSU for the past several years. But he's got something. He's got something. And guys enjoy playing for him. And he's a, he's a good leader of men out there. Yeah, watching Campbell, it reminds me of what Mike Zimmer right out the gate in like 2014, 2015 did for the mm. Vikes. Rallied the troops with that kind of old school hard nose smash you in the mouth for four quarters, never give up attitude. And what happened was the team kind of rallied around playing the underdog role. Like they loved being the team that everyone doubts and just kind of assumes is an easy win, tries to skate by like it's just another bye week on the schedule. Vikes stunned a lot of teams like that early on under the Zimmer era and kind of preferred to play that underdog role rather than being the favorite. Because when you're the favorite, you stick out like a sore thumb. You start to get some more attention. You get the bullseye on your back. And, you know, things look and feel a lot more difficult every single week, week in and week out, which is why you always see the Super Bowl hangovers teams go into the next year every single opponent every week just takes them so seriously and I think schematically on the field for the Lions you're right Reg defense still well below average they got Aiden Hutchinson I think he's going to be a stud they get Josh Pascal their third pick back from Kentucky in a couple weeks he started on the pub but that's forced Jared Goff in the offense to pass a lot in the second half which is why you've seen these big shootout kind of scores and they've got the guys that fit that personnel DeAndre Swift perfect running back to catch those dump offs and get up the field and do or die two, three, four minutes left on the clock. On top of that, I'm on Ron St. Brown. You mentioned uh, Rodrigo, a steal in the sixth round. Amon Ron St. Brown has turned into like this number one legitimate threat. He was drafted in the sixth round as well. So when you can find these gems on day three in the draft, it just helps so much. TJ Hawkinson, top 10 pick. They paid DJ Chark a boatload of money. They'll get Jamison Williams back here halfway through the season and then watch out. They're not going to make the playoffs. I'm with you. They probably won't go on a crazy run and rip out four or five wins in a row. But they will look like a legitimate 500 ball club, which is a huge improvement from where they've been. And I think it's just kind of the natural step in the progression of a team on the rise here. We say it all the time. Teams in the NFL, they start and stop with the head coach. Dan Campbell just looks like he's figured out a way for them to shake that loser label, I guess. And he's just got guys fighting for him. And that's how building a team back up from ground zero kind of starts. Speaking of coaches... What are your early impressions on KOC through the first two weeks? Like from when we hired him to now, has anything changed in your mind? Is he the guy you expected him to be? What has he confirmed or denied from your offseason assessment of him thus far? So I think KOC is as advertised. So mm -hmm. when they hired him, you know, a lot of people talked about how he came from the Sean McVay coaching tree. But, you know, mm -hmm. he does have influences from guys like Shanahan and Josh McDaniels. So, like, his offense is heavy on the McVay side because that's where he was the last couple of years. You see a lot of 11 personnel, which the Rams run as well, and he does a lot of things out of that. But, you know, I think up until this point, I've liked the plans that he's gone out and done. Like, 
if you look at it, I think Sam uh, says something about this. In the second half, four drives inside the, the Eagles 30, ending up in no points. Oof. There were some times where they were really moving the ball. And mm -hmm. he his offense looked good. And then some type of mistake faltered them on a drive. And so I think he had a good game plan against Philly. I just don't think that they executed it the right way. What I will like to see is them finishing more of these drives in six. That first week, they finished a lot of those drives with three points. And his goal line offense looks good when they get to the goal line. That mm -hmm. red zone, that inside the 30, it, it seems like, you know, the, the offense still needs some, some progression there. But – I will say the guys look like they really enjoy playing for him. They believe in him and what he's trying to get them to do. They respect him. And that goes a long way. And that says a lot about who he is and who he came into that building to be for the guys that he's uh, leading. All right. So I got to ask Monday night, 24 seven beat down. You're sitting on your couch. Were you ever thinking, man, Zimmer never would have let this go down like this. Is there any ounce uh -huh. of regret about letting Zimmer go for you after that Monday night debacle? No, I mean, they felt like they had to make a decision that was mm -hmm. best for the football team. And look, last season we saw them fight back in, in certain games and, and also just kind of like falter down the stretch as well. All those games that they ended up losing by one possession, like, that was tough to watch. But look, Zimmer's team was not, you know, devoid of of not necessarily like blowouts, but some bad losses. Like I'm thinking of that San Francisco game last year. They they didn't have much of anything for them last year. And so, you know, there were times where they they did not look good. You know, uh the game against Cleveland, they didn't look good. Mm -hmm. You know, they only scored seven points. And Cle I think Cleveland only scored 14 points, if I'm not mistaken, in that game. Like, there have been some times where they've looked bad under Mike Zimmer. This looks different. They were attacking still. And, you know, I'm not sure that they would have run it back with Clint Kubiak this year. You know, there were still restrictions. There were still, you know, ways that the team was hamstrung offensively. And defensively, you know, yeah, he was lining them up man to man and all that stuff. But they were letting up a lot of plays last year. I'm thinking about that Detroit game in Detroit. They let up a lot of plays to Jared Goff and that winless at the time Lions team. So, look, this is just part of the NFL. Guys are taking their lumps. They're learning from this. You know, I don't expect them to have another performance like this one. You know, they're going to correct some things. I do like the fact that KLC – did not place the blame on anybody but himself for them not being able to execute there. He felt like he should have simplified some things for Kirk because Kirk was clearly rattled out there. And, you know, that says a lot. I don't know if Zimmer would have said anything like that. That's on me. That's on me. That's what KOC said. I don't think Zimmer would have said anything like that after a performance like Monday night. I'm with you. I agree. Even if Zimmer does get hired back somewhere and is successful as like a defensive coordinator, most likely, I don't think he'll ever be a head coach again. There's not going to be any jealousy or envy over here letting him go because sometimes it's just so crystal clear for all parties involved, there needs to be a change for a variety of reasons. And that's where Zim and this organization were clearly at. So wish him the best of luck. And honestly, I think he'll be successful as a coordinator if he ever chooses to do so. Vikes take on Detroit in week three. Lions coming off that big win versus Washington at home. Rookie Aiden Hutchinson, three sacks already this year. Lions offense has averaged 34 points in their last four games dating back to last year. Game kicks off at noon on Fox. Plenty more Vikings and NFL talk to get into. And next, we're checking in on Cat, Rudy, and Ant in ESPN's latest Top 100 rankings. But first, Vikings open up in Vegas as six-point favorites at home versus the Lions this week. Vegas has this one scheduled to be a shootout with the 54-point over-under. You can check those odds out and more with Bet Online, BetOnline.net. Fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Stats, news, and info. You want it. They got it. Bet Online makes betting easy and is your number one source for all your betting needs. Go to betonline.net today to learn more. That's betonline.net 
where the game starts. And remember, when you subscribe to Lockdown Sports Minnesota, you're getting endless Vikings talk with local experts. Sam and Ron talk football every day in the Ron Johnson Show. Reggie Wilson gives you a sports anchor's perspective right here on Superior Sports Talk. And the Minnesota Football Party brings together the top Vikings podcasters in the city. Subscribe to the free Lockdown Sports Minnesota podcast feed wherever you find your podcasts. Drop us a five-star review or find our videos on Lockdown Sports Minnesota YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. All right. To basketball we go. Hey, been a while. Fun to say that here. ESPN's latest top 100 player rankings were released. I'm just going to spoil it here for you, Reg. Timberwolves' big four landed like this. D'Lo, 93 on the list. And mm -hmm. Edwards, number 25. Rudy Gobert, number 18. And Cat, number 13 on the list. Reg, of those four, which one jumps out to you, for good or bad, and is just most surprising to you and why? You know, it's a little surprising that Rudy Gobert was at 18 just because, like, he seemed to be so downtrodden. Uh, in Utah with them kind of like giving up on him and, and okay so I'm not the only away. one here then okay yeah all right that yeah. seemed a little it's okay. interesting though it's interesting mm -hmm. though last year he was ranked 25 and this year he seemed to have a lot of value because look you're only as valuable as what someone is willing to give up for you apparently and Minnesota gave up a lot to get Rudy so they obviously mm -hmm. feel like he is of tremendous value to them but Look, man, it, it's it's a it's an interesting situation here. You know, him going to this this Timberwolves team with well, really, they call it they're gonna call it like the Twin Towers with him and Cat. But you know, Cat wants to space the floor. You know, and maybe he doesn't have to be down low. You know, doing some of the grunt work as much because Rudy kind of has that on lock. I am interested to see how those two play together. Uh, but it's just so interesting that they put him at 18. You know, I, I saw someone uh, on Twitter, I think it was yesterday or the day before, they were kind of upset that he was higher on this list than Bam Adebayo. And it's funny because mm, you think about okay. it, they kind of do some of the same things. Uh, but I think you kind of have to give it to Rudy for doing it at a longer time span than Bam has. And so Bam is a young ascending player. You know, I do think that he still has another level that he can go to in his game. But, you know, you kind of see Rudy like kind of what you see is what you get type thing. And so, you know, he's going to be able to help block a lot of shots and, and defend the perimeter and, you know, all that good stuff. So, like, he he does have a lot of value, but 18 just seems, you know, yeah, 18 I, seems pretty I, I, high. I guess I, I thought maybe I was going to expose myself for a second, not an elite NBA mind like yourself, but I knew Rudy was a stud. I think about building a team from scratch. I thought it was just a given. You'd take Ant over Gobert 10 out of 10 times. So am I to believe He's this higher list than is Donovan more... Mitchell too. That's wild. So am I to believe maybe this, this list is just who's most talented today based solely off last year's play and not for the future taking like age into consideration? Because if you're drafting a team, you're not taking Rudy Gobert over Ant, right? Or am I crazy? Am I nuts? No. I'm nuts. Ant is a star and okay. he is quickly approaching that superstar level. Mm -hmm. And if he takes another step in his game, you know, we may anoint him a superstar like I'm looking for Ant to make the all-star team this year and really just take his game just up another notch and you know he's been in the lab I know there was so much to say about Anthony Edwards and his like desire to actually like uh do this and his you know because mm -hmm. he loves football and you know he has other interests and you know all that but like I think from his play last season and things that you've seen from him you know the work that he's putting in you know, showing it on social media and things like that. I think that it's kind of been overplayed. And I think he cares a lot more about this than some people maybe realized before. I think it's part, it's mostly because Ann is such a fiery competitor. He doesn't want to lose. And so if you don't want to lose, you put that work in and you make your game more complete to the point where can't nobody like guard you or, or, you know, really stick with you. And I think that's what he's doing, you know, to his game. And if he comes into this season 
takes it up another lot, another notch, maybe averages, you know, 25, 26 points a game along with Cat. Like that's scary. And like I said, that that would seem to to be an all-star type of performance for him next season. NBA season legit right around the corner. That's unbelievable to me. Wolves' first preseason game, October 4th versus the Heat, just 13 wow. days away. Regular season tips off October 19th versus the Thunder in the backyard at Target Center. Get your tickies now. NBA season just under a month away. All right. Time has come. New favorite segments here called Gimme One. Gimme One. First up, Gimme One. Gimme One 0-2 team that's toast. Barbecue chicken already. Huh. Titans, Raiders, Bengals. I'm going Carolina Panthers. Okay, you went the easy way. Okay. I tried to set you Carolina up for a spicy Panthers. take. Okay. Right. No, no, no. You're not going to do that. I think oh, – so, so, look, I get where you're going with that, but mm -hmm. I think with the Titans, I trust their head coach. Been there, done that. You know, I yep. think Vrabel's going to get them back together some kind of way. Raiders. Not that I trust Josh McDaniels per se, but I will say, like, with him uh, just getting there, like, you kind of give him the benefit of the doubt. And they have the 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 players that I'm not really sure about that defense, but mm -hmm. you got Carr and Adams and Renfro, like, and uh, Darren Waller. Like, mm -hmm. I kind of trust that they'll get on track some kind of way. And then the Bengals. Super Bowl hangover is real for those teams that lose in the Super Bowl. They usually don't tend to go well that next season. And it's particularly discouraging that they spent $50 million plus dollars on the offensive line, and Joe Burrow has been sacked a league high 13 times already through two weeks. Like, yikes. Like, he's spending a lot of time on the turf for a guy who – it's supposed to have new bodyguards. Lyle Collins just getting put in a blender by Michael Parsons last Sunday. And so, but, you know, I think Joe has that grit and that determination to help them kind of get over that hump. They're going to hopefully simplify some things, get back to the drawing board, and start to pick up some wins. Carolina, I'm just not sure, man. I don't know about Matt Rule. He's on the hot seat. I, I've never really been a big believer in Baker Mayfield. You know, Booger McFarland said he's a one read and go quarterback where you have mm -hmm. to really simplify some things for him. And, you know, he won the competition over Sam Darnold. And it's just like, okay, like, all right. Like, and, but they just haven't looked all that great through two weeks. And I haven't seen anything. That's a tough division. Like, hello, Tampa, New <laughs> Orleans. Atlanta's kind of improved, you know. I I think them and Carolina are like kind of like at the gutter um, mm -hmm. when it comes to to teams in that division. But yeah, it looks like Carolina is cooked, man. But it's not for lack of talent. They do have some talent on that team, but I just don't see how they match up with other teams to to just like consistently win this season. First draft Matt Rule had, he literally drafted. Mm -hmm all defensive players and it was just like all right man holy smokes in two three years this defense is going to be legit and they drafted a few really saw i mean they hit on a few of those picks brian burns mm -hmm. is a stud florida state coming off the edge jc horn he got hurt last year but when he was in he was a stud top 10 cornerback but i just thought this offense once they got baker with christian mccaffrey dj moore and a couple other weapons in there I just thought they would be better, man. And they're just, maybe it's Baker came on so late in the summer. He's still learning the playbook, the nuances, the chemistry, the timing, et cetera. Maybe I'm just making excuses for him. But right now, man, I just expected a lot more out of that offense. Of those big three, though, Titans, Raiders, Bengals, I got the most faith in the Titans because of the division. Like you get to play Houston mm -hmm. twice. Indy is yeah. as strong as maybe what we thought they were. Uh, and the Jacksonville Jags twice. Raiders and the Bengals, those divisions, man, are so brutal. Rough. We know about the AFC Rough. West. And then the Bengals, man, you're going to play Lamar twice. You're going to play the Browns, who have just so solid on defense twice. And then the Steelers twice as well. Just really tough, man. They're not out of it yet by any means. Such a long season. We're taking a little small sample size. But so far, of those three, I'm with you. I really respect and admire Mike Vrabel, I think he's going to turn the Titans around when this is all said and done. All right, next one up. Give me Absolutely. one. Give me one 2023 free agent quarterback who gets the bag next offseason. Marcus Mariota, Jimmy G, or Baker Mayfield? I think I know you're not going with Baker. 
No, not going with Baker. I'm not going with Mariota either. Like, I could have easily picked uh, the Falcons for the gimme one as well. I don't think yeah. they have much of anything going this season. They might as well play Desmond Ritter and let him kind of mm -hmm. figure some things out because he's the future for next year. But because uh, they can't even get Kyle Pitts the ball. But anyway, going back to your question, I think it's going to be Jimmy G because, look, He's coming into this year like YOLO. Like, he's playing with house money. What does he have to lose? He's got a great team around him. All he has to do is steer that ship. And really, last year, things were working. They made the playoffs. They beat the Packers. Like, they were close to beating the Rams. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think they just felt the need that, you know, they had this young quarterback. They got to see what they have. Got to move forward. but. I was watching NFL Live yesterday, and he made a, a – Keyshawn Johnson made a point. He was like, what's wrong with having Jimmy G? Like, what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. And I think one man's trash is another man's treasure is the same. One team's throwaway is, is another team's shiny toy. And so at some point next season or in next offseason, somebody's going to give Jimmy G the bag because – He's going to show some things. He's got a lot to prove, but nothing to lose this year. He is a very competent quarterback. And there's going to be a quarterback needy team next year that decides that they're going to take a chance on him. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Zach Wilson didn't work out, you know, in New York, maybe the Jets. Robert Sala was his defensive coordinator for a few years. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe they took a flyer on him. You know, uh, not really sure what's going to happen with Tua. But, you know, Mike McDaniel is down there. He coached Jimmy G. He might decide that he might take a flyer on Jimmy if Tua doesn't work out. Like, you just you just don't know, you know? Like, and, and I think that's something that is is worth monitoring for next season because he's a guy who has taken a team to a Super Bowl. He's a guy that has taken a team consistently to the playoffs. He's been available. Those three things right there. Sounds like a guy you would want on your team. And so I think that's a guy that should get the bag next year. I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but there's a legitimate chance Trey Lance may never be the same again. I mean, torn ligament in his ankle. They're saying he'll be back and ready. Granted, this happened in what, week one, week two? So it's like, okay, full calendar year to come back and rehab. But if you're considered a mobile quarterback and all of a sudden you just don't feel confident cutting and exploding on one ankle now all of a sudden, the rest of your career, so maybe... What if Jimmy G just ends up sticking around? Maybe it's only year-by-year -year contracts. Maybe they end up locking mm -hmm. him up for a little bit more long-term, cheaper deal, two, three years. But Jimmy G, when this is all said and done, we may look back and say, you know what? He's the guy who brought you to the Super Bowl. You've gone deep into the NFC Championship game multiple times with him. Maybe Jimmy G just happens to be a, a guy that you just can't get rid of, and they end up rolling with Jimmy G over Trey Lance next season. We'll see how it all shakes out. All right, that's a wrap today, though. Back tomorrow, breaking down more Vikings, NFL, and Twins. Remember, you got to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Join us every day for another episode with your 30-minute breakdown of everything Minnesota sports. We're a podcast, too, free and available on all platforms. Subscribe, drop us a five-star review, and take us everywhere on the go. That's the man, Reggie Wilson, on Twitter, at TV. Check him out every night up on CARE 11. I'm Luke Inman on Twitter, at Luke underscore Spinman. Special thanks to our producer, Matt DeBritz. Tune in tomorrow to Superior Sports Talk, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota. For Reggie, I'm Luke. Until tomorrow, signing out. Be blessed. Spread love today.